Hey, this is Thunder Vagger. I'm sure you guys know my story. You know that for over a decade of my life now, which, which is unbelievable to me that I have now done this, I've dedicated that time to just searching for just tiny shreds of evidence, glimpses, anything I could find proving that these big furry giants are in fact real. And if somebody ha had stopped me 10 years ago before I went down this path and said, hey man, I bet you a million dollars, Thinker Thunker, that I can take three simple measurements and prove that, say, well, not that thing. That thing's a human. But that, that thing right there couldn't possibly be human. I would have taken that bet. And as we now know, I would have lost that bet because I've now, I, I've now discovered a way. I've written a book about simple scientific proof where you can take three simple measurements and prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that that right there is not a human. But here's the crazy part. Th this is what I want to talk about. In, in my book, Solved, my very first chapter, I talk about this weird phenomenon, how we humans can be looking right at jaw-dropping proof and, and just simply not see it. it. It's like our brains and our eyes conspire together to block the truth from us. And I'm talking about even scientists and our best and brightest minds. It, it still affects them the same way. The truth is blocked from all of us. And in this video today, I want to show you something that isn't hidden away by any means. It is right in front of the world's eyes and it's literally all over the world. Proof, irrefutable proof that, that giants were all over this planet. And if they weren't giants, physical giants, they were technological giants. Let's check it out. <laughs> Okay, here is something in plain sight that everybody can see. That's a big rock, right? I mean, that thing right there weighs 340 tons. And here's the thing. The museum in Los Angeles, California said, hey, we want that rock. We want to, we want to make art out of that rock. So they spent 10 million bucks. Like a lot of this gear, well, that former picture is better. They had to have a lot of this equipment build. And this thing is like almost a football field long. It's got like over a hundred tires on it. And they had to transport that rock 105 miles from the quarry to the museum. It had to creep along five miles an hour over highways. It couldn't go anywhere where there were overpasses. And this thing became a literal rock star. It had to go through like 20 cities and people came out in mass just to catch this giant going past. And it ended up right here. It's now called levitated mass and people flock to this thing. They can walk under it. And yeah, $10 million is a lot of money, but it's, it's, it's really like a, a celebration of how, how far mankind has come how what technological giants we are that we can pick up 680,000 pounds and transport it and then install it up here in this art installation and, and let people walk by let people walk under it and be in awe and the really amazing thing is the documentary in this says this is the most weight that mankind has moved has transported since the making of the Great Pyramids. Wrap your mind around that. And before moving on, yeah, I know we have cranes that can now pick up 20,000 tons like this big guy here, but it's stationary. It, it can't go down the road. So that's out. Now try to wrap your mind around this. This is at a site called Sacsayhuaman. It's, it's just outside of Cusco, Peru. And we're not talking about just one multi-ton stone here. We're talking about over 5,000 of them. Somebody built these walls thousands and thousands of years ago. And look at that. It's like, it's like they could just play with these stones. It's like, 
it was just Plato to them, and they could, they could sculpt it and shape it and make it do anything they wanted. But but think about that. How how would you do that? Let's say they some civilization thousands of years ago could could uh, melt stone. You're still talking about having to pour sometimes over 220 tons worth of molten stone. How are you going to do that? How would we do that now? Much less how would how would some civilization, the Incas, 2,000 two years ago plus, how would they have done that? They, they, they weren't that far from living in caves back then. They, did, they had no written language. They, they hadn't invented the wheel yet, the concept of a wheel. They had, they had no science, no engineering, no mass. The Inca culture didn't even have iron tools yet. Yet scientists would, would have us believe that near near cavemen were able to do what we can't do today. Look at this. Here, here they molted and, and shaped these rocks into a corner, again, as if it was Play-Doh. And the thing is, these, these rocks, they were shaped so perfectly around them and all of the other rocks around them that you can't fit a human hair in there. And there, there's no mortar here. There's no concrete or anything like that. And this is an earthquake zone. This is like 12,000 foot up in the Peruvian mountains again. So they have existed for thousands upon thousands of years, no mortar, and remain perfect to this day. Look at levitated mass again. Only one rock, 340 tons, cost us $10 million to move it. Somebody moved 5,000 of these perfectly shape them and fit them in together and haul them up the side of a mountain. And the really crazy thing is this was happening all over the world thousands of years ago. Look at this rock over here. This is in a site in Baalbek, Lebanon. This big rock here, which was shapen on all sides, perfect rectangle. It's estimated to weigh over 1800 tons. That is five times levitated mass five times the best that we can do today C can you can you can you get your mind around that and in here the, the sites like that again all around the world the there are megalithic sites in japan this rock right here uh has been shaped into this shape whatever it is nobody knows what what shape this is supposed to be why it was used but it's cleverly fit over over water here to, to where it looks like it's floating. Now this thing weighs 500 tons. That, that's the estimated weight. So somebody in ancient Japan was playing with 500 ton stones, shaping them and making art installations that are way, way cooler than just sticking them up on some concrete walls. And by the way, in Baalbek, this stone didn't get moved, but other stones did get moved and they were moved into this site and placed into this wall with other like 1,000, 1,200 enormous stones, all shapen, all fit perfectly with the stones next to them, all something that mankind could not do to this day. It is beyond our current capability. Okay, here's one more quick example I want to show you. But there, there are literally tons of these megalithic sites, no pun, but Mount Rushmore. I mean, we can all agree this took a massive amount of work. It happened over 14 years. Uh, they used TNT and like pneumatic, uh, you know, hammering devices. A mountain of work, literally. Now look at this. This is a site in India an ancient temple carved thousands of years ago into the side of a mountain. Everything you see here was carved out of just one massive rock. We see, we see intricately carved pillars, statuary, engravings, rooms, doors, windows, pathways. There are, there are rooms throughout all of these that are finished out perfectly with more art and statuary inside all of them. All done 
in a time where, again, no written languages, no, no math, no, no, no sciences, no wheel, no iron tools, no dynamite. And yet again, science tells us it, it, it was just done by ancient people. That, that's it. End of story. They won't demonstrate how they did it. It's just ancient people did this. It, end of story. Now here is the really mind-boggling thing. Maybe, maybe you can see an, another site, a better example of how it's just carved into pure rock. There is no debris field of, say, millions of tons of all the rock that came out of this, like there is here at Mount Rushmore. None of these sites, you'll find a debris field. It's like the millions of tons of rock that came out of these just vanished. Like whatever carved this out was eating the rock at the same time. I, I guess... I guess what I'm trying to say is it's impossible that these sites are here and that they were carved all out of just one massive rock and that, that all of the debris that came out of this is somehow magically, magically gone. It's impossible that this exists. And yet, you, you can go tour it today if you want. It's there. Okay, one last thought I want to share with you. There, there literally isn't the words to express how amazing these megalithic sites all over the world are and how impossible it is that they exist and yet they do exist. So I developed my own system to measure a civilization based on how much weight that civilization could quarry and then shape and then transport that, that, that weight wherever they needed it to go. I'm calling it the Thinkathugger Massive Weight Index, for lack of a better name. And it works like this. There are three levels of civilizations. Level one, level two, level three. Level one, a civilization must be able to quarry, shape, and transport 1,000 tons. Level two, civilization must be able to quarry, shape, and transport 1 million tons tons, which is just unthinkable. And then level three civilization, the highest, they can literally move heaven and earth. They, they could latch on to planets and stars and tow them and do anything with anything. There, there is no weight too great for this level three civilization. Now keep in mind, a level one civilization it starts at, at 1,000 tons. Well, levitated mass is only 340 tons, so we're not even halfway there to being to a level one. Modern man is a level zero civilization. And, and I know that stings a little, but, but here's what I want you to wrap your mind around. Thousands upon thousands of years ago, there were level one civilizations all over the world that could quarry, shape, and transport 1,000 tons or more. Do you really believe what science tells us? That these level one, highly advanced civilizations, thou thousands of years ago on Earth, do you really believe that they were just slaves and all but cavemen with, with no technology whatsoever? able to do five times, move, move five times the amount of weight that we can do today? Do you really believe that? Now, some of you, you're going to head to the comments and say, look, I saw this guy on Discovery Channel, and he was moving around one ton blocks, you know, putting them on wooden rollers, moving around with ease. Well, watch this. This guy has a 4 before on a hydraulic press. And there's our result. 15,000 pounds crushed this 4x4. Four four. Now imagine even, even our old buddy levitated mass, 340 tons, 340 times 2,000 pounds. Levitated mass weighs 680,000 pounds. So if 15,000 pounds crushed this 4x4 four four in seconds, 
680,000 pounds would pulverize logs and trees trying to trying to roll it on them. So the, the, the idea that early man was rolling around these 300, 1,000, 1,800 ton blocks on, on trees and logs is a joke. Okay, so to make this easier to understand, let's put it in terms of cold, hard cash. Levitated mass, the big rock there at the museum in Los Angeles, it cost 10 million dollars to have that rock picked up and transported 105 miles. They didn't have to shape it perfectly. They didn't have to fit it in place alongside thousands of other blocks that had to be shaped perfectly. Nope. It's just one raw rock transported down a silk smooth highway. $10 million, if you please. All right. Now think about the Sexe Waman site there in Cusco, Peru. There were 5,000 blocks there. Okay, so they only, the biggest there at Cusco, only weighed around 220 tons, so we can knock off some money there. But at Cusco, they didn't have silk smooth highways to, to transport these, these massive stones down. They didn't have massive hydraulic earth-moving machinery. They didn't even use the wheel. So you can't say, well, they just, they just rolled them on trees. They didn't. They, they weren't using the wheel. So get that out of your mind. And even if they had used the wheel, we already know that 15,000 pounds will crush wood. So say 400,000 pounds would absolutely pulverize trees. So, nope, they didn't roll them. They uh, essentially, at Cusco thousands of years ago, had to use some sort of magic to get 5,000 rocks up a mountain slope, all right? And that magic was, exp was, was surely expensive, so I'm going to leave the price fixed at $10 million per stone because then, once they got them there, each stone had to be perfectly shaped with as many as seven cuts so that all the stones around it would fit like this giant megalith megalithic jigsaw puzzle. So 10 million bucks times 5,000 stones. That means that that ancient wall there in Cusco, Peru would cost somewhere around 50 billion of today's dollars, give or take a few hundred million or so. Now, the thing is, nobody is stupid enough today to try to spend $50 billion on a wall that served no real purpose. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And bottom line, thousands and thousands of years ago, there were level one civilizations all over the planet able to lift five times or more what we currently can today. Do you believe it was ancient man doing that? Or do you believe there's some other logical explanation of that? I would like to hear that. All right, everybody. Special thanks as always to my patrons and my YouTube members. W without your support, I simply would not have the time to, to do all the research and make all the videos that I do and then the books and all. Thank you so very much. And if you have some amazing booklet footage for me to check out, please go post it on my Team Thinker Thunker Facebook group. All right, everybody. Take care.